So where's your faith? There are many places in the Bible where Jesus indicted the disciples for not having faith. Can you imagine hanging out with someone who was healing the side of the blind, causing damaged limbs to grow back or heal, and even raising the dead and still not believe that he is? He gave us one major command when he told us only believe. If we who say we believe in Jesus and the blood he shed to save us, why do we continue to operate in unbelief? Only believe even in the presence of negative circumstance. I remember when I lived in Atlanta, I had a good job making plenty of money. I had just rented a home and felt secure in my job and in my ability to pay that rent. Out of nowhere, I was let go, and I almost panicked, but I remember that God is intimately involved in the affairs of those who put their trust in him. I remember getting the notice to vacate. I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, I walked around the house praying and laying hands on him and reminding God of his promises to me, and I told the Lord, no matter what happens, I'll trust you. The day came for me to answer the eviction calendar, and I showed up in court and as they called the calendar, my landlord didn't answer. The judge told everybody whose landlord isn't present to sit in the jury box. I found myself sitting alone in that jury box. As I took my seat, I wondered what was going on. But I continued to thank the Lord for whatever it was that he was going to do. Then it came time. We were sworn in. And then the judge said, before we get started, for everybody that's seated in the jury box, your cases have been dismissed. I began to praise the Lord. And I called my landlord when I got home and asked him what happened. And he told me that he didn't know why, but the Lord told him to drop the case. We made arrangements for me to pay the arrears up, but I was still unable to find commensurate employment in time. So the same thing happened about three, four months later. And I found myself back in eviction court. This time I sat there not called to the jury box, and the scenario was a bit different. Even though my landlord still didn't answer the calendar, I was still called to vacate the property. I thought to myself, this can't be. Was the first time just luck? I rebuked that, and I decided to continue to trust the Lord. And as an act of faith, I waited for the courtroom to empty out. And I caught the court clerk exiting the courtroom and I said to her, excuse me, ma'am, I think there's been a mistake. She asked me what my name was. I told her and she opened up her folder and scrolled down. And lo and behold, God is so good because she said, I'm sorry for the mix up, but your case has been dismissed. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we must build our faith to the point that we know that we know that the Lord will take care of those who love him. The word of God tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. Or in other words, we can't depend on what we see, what we think, or what we feel. But on every promise that God made to those who love him, the promise we should lean on is Psalm 34, 19, where it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Believe that and stop trusting in man because Men will fail you, not because they want to, but because they're human and imperfect. God isn't human. He's perfect. Believe through the circumstances that God will do it for you and watch the faithfulness of God work on your behalf. Have a blessed day. Remember, only believe.